So in this slide, uh, we are going to learn about the knowledge space recommendation system. So what is knowledge space? So there are some topics on the knowledge space recommendation system. So the first will be about constraint base, and the other will be about case base. And in the constraint base, we will have several kinds of methods like constraint satisfaction problem, conjunctive query, interacting with RS or recommender system. And then we will understand about default and some methods for unsatisfied requirement. In the case space, we will use the similarity measure and we will adopt with the so there will be some examples in the later part. So until now, you already learned many things about recommender system. So this is just a diagram to show that uh, you already learned about the collaborative filtering, content-based filtering, hybrid. And now we are going to look at the knowledge space. So the knowledge based recommender system, we already learned about the collaborative. So the collaborative means yeah. it's a kind of statement, tell me what's popular among my peers. So I want to see from other users and then uh, if it is similar with me, then yeah, I can get that recommendation. The content base, it means show me more of the same what I like. So if I like comedy, then show me the other possible comedy drama or comedy movie based on the content. But there is another kind of recommendation system we call it knowledge space. Tell me what fits this on my needs. So we will learn what is knowledge space. So why do we need knowledge space recommendation? Products with low number of available readers. For example, <clears throat> this luxury house. Or this is a luxury pension. So who will rent this pension? Only people who are very, very rich. So if the person who are very rich rent this pension, then it means only few people will give rating on this one. So who will buy this very expensive car? Only people who have big money. So, if we want to look at the ratings, maybe the rating maybe only for twenty users or ten users, a very small number of rating. Or sometimes they want they do not want to give the rating. So, how we can rely on the ratings? The other aspect about the knowledge base is the time span. Time span, what is this? It is the time horizon. Five year old ratings for computers. It means after you give the rating, let's say the rating is in 2005. Do you think that the computer rating in 2005 is relevant to this year. This year is 2023. So the computer in 2005, it is not relevant anymore with the computers today. So we need to have some kind of time span. Usually they call it the 
electronic product okay, like computers or yeah, some other electronic product. It is just five years. After five years, it is not relevant anymore. Or user lifestyle, family situation change. So it is also a kind of time span. So customer want to define their requirement explicitly. So for example, I want to buy a car, but the car should have the black color. Okay, so it's more specific. So that's why the person or many researchers try to propose the knowledge space accommodation. So there are two main of the knowledge space recommendation system. The first is the constraint base. In the constraint base, it is based on the explicitly defined set of recommendation rules. So we will have the rules. Rules mean the condition. And we need to fulfill the recommendation Fulfill means that we need to satisfy the About the case space, it is based on the different types of similarity methods. If you still remember the similarity methods, we have the Chakat, Dice, person correlation and then cosine similarity and etc. So we can use that one as well. And we want to retrieve items that are similar to specify requirement. So if we have the rules or we have the specific requirements, so we will we want to check the similarity. The most similar products will be given as the recommendation. So both approaches are similar in their conversational recommendation process. Okay, so this one and this one, it is similar in the conversational, so like question and answer. User specify the requirement. And then the system try to identify the solution. If no solution can be found, then user can change the requirements. So in the constraint-based recommender system, there are at least three things that we can learn. The first is the knowledge base. In the knowledge base, we will have the user features the user features means user profiles for example what is his gender how old is she where is he live and anything about the profile of users job education family and etc item variables it means the product Variables. Let's say camera. The camera has the pixel size. The camera has the weight. The camera has the size. The camera has option functions, etc. So in the middle, there will be constraint. So the constraint that it means the user can give some kind of rule for example the price should be lower than 300 u or the camera should be suited for sports photography so that's can that is the problem so if we have the knowledge then yeah we can look at some other method like the constraint satisfaction problem so in the optimization, there's a problem about the constraint satisfaction problem. And we can also do with the conjunctive query. So the conjunctive query, some examples are like SQL. 
human as well. So if you learn database, yeah, I think you learn about this SQL. So we will look at those one by one. Knowledge space. What is knowledge space? So the knowledge space, it is usually mediates or this is to connect between user model features and item property variables. User model features means the requirement and the item property variables means the catalog. The catalog means the product variables. We will have a set of constraints. So the set of constraints is the logical implication. If user require A, then proposed item should possess feature B. In the constraint, we have hard and soft or weighted constraint. So if it is hard constraint, I only have effect manual. So it is hard constraint. If it is soft constraint, so I'm okay with any camera as long as I can bring it for reference. Okay, then maybe the weight should be very light. So that's the hard and soft constraint. And in the set of constraints, we need to have the solution preferences. So the example of constraint is this one. Okay, the one that I mentioned to you, the price should be lower than 300 euro and the camera should be suited for spot photography. If you look at this table, the price should be lower than 300 euro. Okay, we have the column price. But what if there is no features? For example, the camera should be suited for spot photography. What can we check from this? We have the price alone. We have the MPix, the megapixel. It means the length of the size or the quality of the picture. Optical zoom. So four times, five times, ten times. LCD size. And then whether the camera can record movie or not. Whether the camera uh, has sound or not. Sometimes people want to have cameras that can have sound. or whether the camera is waterproof. So we call this is a pattern. But is there anything that can address this constraint? It is difficult. Okay. So yeah, this kind of things we will say it as the knowledge base. So the knowledge space recommender system is a uh, declarative. Declarative means yeah, you will have a set of variables like xi, xu, d, srs, kbi. So we call this is the constraint satisfaction problem. So in the constraint satisfaction problem, we have XI and XU. It is the variable describing product and user model with domain D. It means the XI is the variable describing the product. XU is the variable describing the user. Domain D 
whether it is like camera or food. So that's what we call as knowledge. And then we have the knowledge space or KP. It means we have the knowledge space with domain restriction. For example, if purpose on travel, then lower the focal length to less than 28 millimeter, which is the camera specification. SRS, so the specific requirements of the user. For example, the purpose is on travel. Okay, so it means the focal length, if it is lower than this one, it means the camera is very small or wide. And then, yeah, we have the product catalog. So the idea is just very simple. We want to assign the coupon. It means we have some kind of uh, condition theta whether it is in the requirement of the product variables and whether it is also in the domain and it satisfies with the specific requirement and the knowledge base and in the product catalog. So this is just the mathematical notation, but actually it is just the if then else. So for example, like this one, we have two properties, customer and product. This is the customer properties. When customer comes to the store, we know that, okay, the customer who come on this store, usually they will ask the product between zero until 1,000 euro. And the customer who come to the store have this kind of profile. Usually they like to have the digital, small print, much. So usually, yeah, we should define this knowledge. And then, okay, the profile for a customer are related to spots, landscape, portrait, macro. So this is based on the knowledge. For the product property, yeah, we will just focus on the product property that we have. So this is the product one, product two, product three, product four, and so on. And each of these are from this color. For example, the price. Okay, the price is between zero until 1,000. So maybe this is only a sample. And then MPix. So we know that our store has the camera between 3 megapixels until 12 meters. The optical zoom is from 4 until 12. For the LCD size, the store provides like 2.5 until 3 and so on. So we call this is the product properties that we have in the store. So when we prepare this one and we have the customer properties, we can define the constraint. Okay. So the constraint will be something related to the uh, two things. Okay. The first is the compatibility constraint. Compatibility constraint or CR. It allows instantiation of customer properties. So we can select one instance from it. You know instance? 
instance we call it sometimes as example okay we select one example for example okay the customer wants to have large size okay we have large size okay and the maximum accepted price must be higher than 200. okay we have the price so if it is more than 200 then maybe the right the range will be from 200 until 1000. okay we have the filter condition so the filter condition means the relationship between customer properties the customer property is this one and the product properties the product properties is this one just an example yeah i want to have the large size photo print with the resolution greater than five megapixel for the product constraint yeah, we have the constraint which is available on the product store so we have only this one in our store so this is the product sample or available product sample an example constraint defining such a product assortment and then its conjunction of this constraint completely define a product all product properties have a defined value okay so the product one the price is this one so this is the defined value this is a defined value this is a defined value okay so what we want to check from this one whether the constraint can be satisfied So the other kind of knowledge base, we can use the conjunctive query. As you look at the previous slide, okay, the conjunctive query, uh, it is similar to the SQL. Okay. It is different from a constraint solver. So it is not to find a valid instantiation for a CSP. CSP is the constant satisfaction problem. CSP. So in the conjunctive query, it is not for the constant satisfaction problem. It is just to query to get from the uh, the product catalog. The conjunctive query is executed in the item catalog. Sometimes we call it a conjunctive database query. And it is a set of selection criteria that are connected conjunctively. Conjunctively means continuously. So we will check the criteria based on the product assortment. Product assortment means something that we have or the available product. Okay. So from the available products, I want to choose this criteria. From this available product, I want to choose the M fix which is higher than 10 and the price is less than 300. So what is it? Uh, higher than 10. Okay, this one. This one. And then the price is less than 300. Okay, P4 and P7. So we have P4 and P7. So interacting with the constraint based recommenders, it means okay, the user can specify his or her initial preferences. So there are three for the initialization preferences. First, all at once, or it can be incremental in the wizard style, or it can be interactive dialogue. The user is presented with a set of matching items. 
with explanation as to why a certain item was recommended. So it is for the interactive dialogue. And at the end, the user might revise clear his or her requirements, especially if there are some alternative solutions. And it is to narrow down the number of matching items. All at once. What does it mean by all at once? If you go, for example, here to the Kupa, you want to buy a pack. So in the left panel, you can see some condition. Okay, so you just click, 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 and then at the end, you just click filter. So it means all at once. So you select all the condition one time and then it will show what are the items based on your condition. The other kind of constraint base can be in the incremental. The incremental means after you have question. So first I would like to check based on the first question. If your answer is weekly then I will show a wizard. I will show another option based on your answer. And then check again. What is your answer based on your answer? If your answer is okay Thursday, then I will check. I will give you another wizard. So it is increment. The panel will be based on your answer from the previous panel. Or, yeah, the more complicated is the interactive dialogue. So, in the interactive dialogue, means you will ask like the chatbot or some kind of knowledge to understand your query. For example, like this one I like circus, but I had, I hit its provision. So, the system will try to understand what does it mean by this query. After the system understand, okay, so the system will give you like answer. Which one of these do you like? Circus, the album from Business Spears, or the circus is a song. And then the user will give another feedback. Oh, I mean the song. After the user gives this one, then yeah, there will be another dialogue. The other thing that we need to understand in the function is, is about default. Default, it will support customers to choose a reasonable alternative. Sometimes the user or the customer unsure, not sure about which option to select. And customers simply do not know technical detail. For example, you should buy a kind of cloud technology. So do you know about the technology in the cloud? Some of you may know, but many of us didn't know the details. So we need to have defaults. There are three types of default. We have the static default, dependent default, and derived default. So setting the next question means uh, most users are not interested in specifying value for all properties. So if you provide the catalog, you have many values, but users, they do not have interest to specify the value. So they want 
Just give me a good recommendation. Identify properties that might be interesting for the users. So that's the most important thing. So the default is also a kind of uh, good mean, important mean, or it is important way to support the customer in the requirement specification process, especially in situation in which they are unsure about which option to select or simply do not know the technical details. For example, it can support customers to choose a reasonable alternative. If the customer is interested in printing large format pictures from digital images, then the, custom, the camera should support a resolution of more than 5 megapixels. So this is the default. So the negative of this default, it can be abused to manipulate as consumer to choose certain options. Yeah. This kind of things happen okay, in the e-commerce. For example, user, user can be stimulated to buy LCD display control panel functionality in a car by presenting the corresponding default value. So, you know, in this case, all cars will have the default LCD panel. But if the user do not want, what happens? It is difficult because the default is already that default. So we got this, is, it can be abused. So there are three kinds of default, static default, pendant default, direct default. Static default means it is a default in is one default is specified per customer property. For example, if the default usage is large spring. So because it is typically users want to generate posters from high quality pictures. So maybe you know that customers who visit your office or customer who visit your websites are usually want to do the large screen. Okay. You can put this as the default. Dependent default. Dependent default means you need to find the different combinations of the potential customer requirements. For example, if the default is small print, then I should make some dependent default with the maximum price. And the maximum price will be 300. There is another default, we call it the derived default. So when the first two default types are strictly based on the declarative approach, okay, we call this is based on the declarative approach. This also based on the declarative approach. So do you know declarative? Yeah, we need to declare, we need to describe. Declare. We need to describe. I want to use the camera for small print. So yeah, that is the description. We call that is the declarative approach. So this two static and dependent, it is based on the declarative, but the direct report exploit existing interaction blocks for the automated derivation of default values. So we don't have any default, but after we do the dialogue, after we do the interaction, we can make the default. So that's what the default.
Now, there is one issue in this kind of constraint case. You can define the constraint, but there might be some unsatisfied requirement because your constraints are too strict. No solution to be found. So what happens if there is no solution? So one possibility is to relax the constraint. The goal is to identify relaxation to the original set of constraints. And so we want to make it more relaxed. Relax constraint of a recommendation problem until a corresponding solution has been found. The user will also be interested in repair proposal. So repair proposal means we fix the condition. If the relaxation means, let's say, I have requirement one, requirement two, requirement three, requirement four. Okay, I have requirement five. So if there are five requirements in terms of relaxation means I will not use R1 until R5, but I may use only R1, R2, and R3. So this is relaxation. I do not use all the requirements. But if it is repair, then we want to, if we have R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. So, no solution. Then, okay, I will change R1 into R1 prime. So, I need to repair my requirement. So, for example, in the first requirement, I want to uh, look at the price 300 euro. But no product with 300 euro. So I can revise. Okay, then maybe I can increase my budget into 500 euro. So this is what we call as the repair. But the relaxation, okay, let's just remove the price. Whatever the products, whatever the price, yeah, I will try to buy. So, that's the difference between relaxation and the repair. So in the uh, relaxation, we have one method. We call it the conflict set. In order to find the conflict set, we need to calculate diagnosis. We need to calculate the diagnosis for the unsatisfied requirement. So a diagnosis is a minimal set of elements. So we have R1, R2 until RK, and those requirements are in the D or in the diagnosis. And it is a subset of requirement that have to be repaired or sometimes here. Yeah. We can also use repair for the relaxation in order to restore the consistency with the given product assortment. So, at least one solution can be. That means if the requirement, if we have the requirement and if the requirement written empty okay so if the requirement written empty then we need to find where the requirement i think this one should be yeah we need to find the requirement minus the d so it means some requirement may not be available so if we minus the D, then it will not be empty. Yeah, I think it's 
Not equal to empty. Not equal to empty means we have a solution. Okay. A complex set CS is defined as a subset R1, R2, R L, which is in the subset of recovery such that the CS or the complex set is empty so for example this one yeah, this is the definition of complete set this is the goal that we want to achieve this is not empty let's say this one we have the requirement r1 price is less than 150 is there any product with price less than 150 okay we have okay. and the requirement too is optimal optical zoom is five times what about this one no oh. this is four it means yeah. r1 r2 will give you no option will give you no product no solution. What about R3? R3 sound yes. This is no. Okay, no solution. And then the R4 waterproof yes. Okay, this is yes. So we need to find the minimum conflict set. Whether R1 and R2 or R1 and R3 or R1 and R4 and yes. So we need to find some the conflict set. This is the algorithm that we can use. Okay, let me use this one. We want to check this on the conflict set one. Conflict set one means R1 and R2. What is conflict set? Conflict set is a set of recommended, sorry, a set of requirements that give you empty solution. So if we have the R1 and R2, empty solution. So this is the first conflict set. Because R1 and R2, no solution. Now, let's remove R1. If we remove R1, so the remaining will be R2. Now, let's suppose we put R4. If R2 and R4 are available, is there any solution? Optical zoom. Oh, but the requirement is five. Waterproof, yes. This one. So this is another conflict. Set. No solution. Okay. Then what is uh, at the end? We want to check if R two is removed. If R two is removed, then We have R1 and R2. So this will be the D. D is the right process. Because of the R1 and the R2, we cannot get any solution. And then in this side, Let's remove R4. So in this side, we have the R1 and the R4 is another diagram.
we can go to the right side because in the left side we remove R1. Okay? So in the right side we want to remove R2. By removing R2 means we still keep the R1 and let's check with other possible which is R2. So in the R1 and R3 this is another config set because R1 is one and the R3 sound yes no solution so we can have another diagnosis R2 and R1 here so but we can just say it is not equal because we already have the diagnosis of R1 and R2 next if we remove R3, then we will have another diagnosis R2 and R3. Okay. So this is the diagnosis from this one, from this one, and from this one. And we can have more diagnosis. Okay. If the R is more, then we have more diagnosis. So the corresponding conflict set are this one, R1 and R2, R2 and R4, and R1 and R2. Okay. So it means if we want to use the requirement of CS1 or the conflict set 1, it will be known. If we use the conflict set 2, it will be also known. If we use the conflict set 3, it will be also no. Hence, the diagnosis derived from the conflict set CS1, CS2, CS3 is this one. So, this is the diagnosis from this. We can use the minimum relax algorithm. This is simple. If we want to find for every product, so P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8, if we have this requirement, if it is possible, then put one. If it is not possible, put zero. What about this one? Optical zoom five. It is not possible. It is possible. Then. It is one and the remaining is zero. The sound yes, okay, only P2, oh, P2, P3, P5, P6, P7, P8. Waterproof yes, P8, P4, and P1. Okay. Then you can see from this one, with the minimum relaxed algorithm, we can see the relationship between the example of requirement and it's of the PI. So we have like two. Okay. Only two requirements that are available. So only two requirements. So each column of the table represents a diagnosis. The goal is to identify the diagnosis that are minimal. So this is the diagnosis, okay. the diagnosis for every of the item. Uh, okay, due to the time constraint, I will uh, explain this one next week. Okay. okay, then thank you very much for listening the class today. I will post the explanation 